Uh, I was just curious, what is it like to go through these position group meetings? You know, if, if you guys are still distancing from each other, my understanding is you're doing Zoom and stuff like that. What's sort of the mm-hmm. format and what has that been like and how is it different than maybe what you're used to? Um, it's pretty similar to what we're going through in school right now. Just a difference in between learning in the position room and learning through Zoom calls. Um, it's been really productive. We get a chance. We get to share the screen and watch film. So old guys coaching young guys. It's, it's been – it's definitely been different. Um, a new experience, challenging for everybody. But I think we're getting good work done, and it's been a good setup. Greg Pickle, Penn Laws. Hi, Ellis. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much. Hey, the NCAA lets you guys start walkthroughs with the coaches tomorrow. I think that's the first time we've ever seen that in college, of course, with everything going on. How excited are you for that, and what will that be like? Do you have any idea yet? Oh, man, I'm, I'm super excited. This is the longest I've been without football since high school, so I know everybody is really looking forward to it. I know they're still working out the specifics and the details of everything, but I'm sure that our, our athletic staff, our medical staff, they got a great plan ahead for us to go in there and get some good work in. Rich Garcella, Reading Eagle. Good morning, Ellis. Thanks for your time. Yeah, of course. Um, can you describe your anticipation for this coming season and what – what would be your reaction if you couldn't play this season because of the virus? Um, all right, so that's the two part. Yep. The first, I'll answer the second part first. Okay. Um, I know we're gonna play when we're gonna play when we're supposed to play, and um, I know the NCAA, the Big Ten, everybody got our best interests at heart. Um, if we don't play, I just got to keep my mindset to keep working, keep getting better, and being ready for for the time when we do play. And what was that first question again? I'm sorry. Can you describe your excitement and anticipation to play? Through the roof. Through the roof. I I was actually talking to my friends about this earlier. This is the most I think I've ever missed football in terms of how hard we've been working, the it being taken away in a blink of an eye with all this stuff going on. So it really just – brought my appreciation, not saying that it was gone from the game, but just emphasized it, and it's, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm hoping for the best. John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Hey, Alice, thanks for taking the time to do this. Mm-hmm. Are, are you concerned at all now that sort of we've seen the first confirmed case within the athletic department? Are you concerned at all, you know, more for your health now that it's you know, a bit of a shock to the system that it's actually at Penn State? Um, like I was saying earlier, I, I trust the medical staff here. I trust the coaching staff. I think that we're all doing the things that we can to help minimize exposure while wearing our mask in the workouts, mask in meetings, doing online meetings. So all I can do is really focus on myself, really, and just continue to be safe, practice social distancing whenever I'm out. Let's go to Nubias New, New Wilborn. And no, you're not. I don't see Nubias. Uh, let's go to Mark Brennan with Fight On State. Ellis, can you talk about the level of talent in that linebacker room? And, you know, along with that, how much competition there is for those open jobs? Um, well, obviously, everybody knows about Micah uh, going on. I think our, our room is loaded. Um, like I was saying, start off with Mikey, you got somebody that's big, athletic, makes plays, uh, one of the top players in the country. Brandon, young guy coming up, five-star, really coming into himself, uh, has great range, great abilities. Jesse, obviously a great playmaker as well, got some snaps last year, uh, been working really hard. We're excited to see what he's going to do. Lance, Charlie, everybody, it's going to be it's gonna be really exciting, obviously. Um, I know what I can bring to the table. And I feel like we wanted the best, if not the best, linebacker room in the country. And I feel like we've got to carry ourselves like that every single day. I feel like we got to work like that every single day. And I feel like we have been going into that competing aspect you were bringing out. When you work together, you automatically, as an athlete, you compete, whether or not you're aware of it. So, like, say we're all running sprints. I'm going to be competing against Mike, and Mike is going to be competing against Jesse. 
we all going to be going against each other. And I feel like that mentality is really what has helped bring us to this level and was going to push us to the next one. Let's go to Chase Goodbread with NFL.com. Hey, Ellis, how you doing? I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, of course. So my question for you is more about college football players in general and not so much mm -hmm. about yourself or your teammates. But there's a lot of chatter among NFL scouts and agents and whatnot that draft prospects may decide to go ahead and opt out this fall and just get ready for the draft, especially if there's an outbreak that cancels more games. Do you mm -hmm. see that as a serious consideration for guys who are ready to go to the next level? Um, in my opinion, my advice would be to just do what's best for you. Um, I know every guy's situation is different. For me right now, I'm just focused on Penn State winning football games here. Thanks. Next up is Peter Terpstra with WTAJ. Hey, uh, what kind of opportunity is this next season for you? Um, you you've made plays in the past, and do you, do you see yourself um, having a breakout year or taking that next step? Definitely, definitely. Um, for those who got a chance to really watch me play, I feel like I was very productive when I was on the field. Um, got a chance to really show out there, do what I can do. This year is going to be my first chance to really go out there, get my feet solidified in the defense, go out there, run it. And it's going to be cool. Like, I, I feel like for a long time, like, it's been working. And I just can't wait to really just show everybody what I can do. Really. It's going to be exciting. I just, yeah, I can't wait. Hello. Let's go to Mark Wogerich with SI.com. Hey, Ellis, thanks again. And I, I like the setup you got going there. It looks good. <laughs> you're set up – you're pretty much set up inside, right? Is it going to be a competition between you and Jesse? And what's it like to compete virtually with somebody for a starting job? Um, there's always competition. Um, I feel like every single spy, every single position. But, yeah, Jesse, he's going to be Mike, Will – uh, everybody's going to be competing. It's been different. We haven't really had a chance to really get out there on the field, but um, competing with our note-taking, competing with our film study, just in everything, like I was saying earlier, just gets you better. Frank Bodetti, York Daily Record. Hey, Ellis. Um, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned about how linebackers are the best, maybe you have the best room in the country, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So we all know about Micah, like you said. What is it about the rest of the room, particularly, that makes you, you say that? Things maybe we haven't seen on the field, right? Yeah. So you yeah. might know a for little me, more about. For me personally, I'm going to let my play talk. Um, <laughs> but Brandon, five-star recruit, um, 240, can run really fast, physical player. Y'all going to see what he can do, too. I mean, ooh. Y'all gonna see what you can do too. I mean, I just know off of how we work, what I see day to day, what we can do, what we bring to the table, and it's not really much talking now at this point. Um, I'm really hoping for the season, hoping for the best, praying for the best, and when the time comes, it's gonna showcase. Tyler Donahue, Lions two four seven. Hi, all. It's great to hear from you. Thanks again for the time. Um, when we, when you look at Jesse Lucchetta, um, what, wh what's the scouting report on him? Uh, wh wh why does he challenge you? Why is he going to be a guy who, you know, tries to get that number one job at the middle linebacker? What do you like about him? Uh, Jesse, uh, for starters, he's a great dude. Great dude. Me and Jesse are great friends. We live together. We're roommates. Me, him, Micah, we all live together. So, um, Jesse, big physical player. Good instincts, great pass rusher. I mean, he's he came down from Sam. Great understanding of the game, student in the game. I can keep going on about Jesse. I mean, they all push me in every single aspect. But definitely, like you were saying, especially Jesse, because we're at the same position now. It's just, I would say, mostly the mental aspect of the game because we're both students. So we kind of just throw different things off each other, come to each other for different things, or wondering about different formation situations. And yeah. 
Let's go to Mike Gross with Lancaster Newspapers. Go ahead, Mike. Whoop. Okay. There you go. All right, there we go. All right, Alice, uh, thanks for doing this today. Um, last year, there, there was a point where, at least to my eye, where you really started to figure it out and were starting to make plays and, and, and starting to really be – you know, noticed out there. Do you, do you feel the same way? Was there a moment when uh, this started to click and, hey, I can really play at this level? I would say, um, man, which game was that for me? I would say my redshirt freshman year, the, the bowl game, the Citrus Bowl, is when I was like, yeah, I can do this. And then I came out last year. Um, caught my groove around the Maryland game. Try to keep it from there, and, and yeah, I mean, football is football. Um, if you prepare right, do everything you're supposed to do off the field. I feel like on the field, it usually takes care of itself. Um, I believe Audrey Snyder is calling in from her phone. Is that you, Audrey? Did I just unmute it? Yep, that's me. You got me, Greg? <laughs> yep, go ahead. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Alice. Uh, yeah, of let's course. go back to what you said about rooming with Jesse and Micah. Uh, mm -hmm. What is that dynamic like, living with those guys, especially with a guy you're competing for a position with? Um, how has that been going? And is Jesse and Micah yet settled the long-disputed thermostat debate that they had? I, I couldn't catch the second half when you were talking about a debate. What were you saying? Yeah, have Mike and Jesse settled on uh, what degree to keep the apartment at, what temperature yet? That was a big debate. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's that's still back and forth, but it's been a it's been a blast living with these guys. I mean, the ability to just walk right down the steps and show somebody some some film and be like, hey, what you think about this? Or be like, hey, you want to go get some work in, run some hills, whatever. It's been it's been a blessing. And plus, like, we're, we're more than football players. So these guys are my friends and my brothers. And, yeah, we, we be on the game, just doing whatever, just hanging out. Tobias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Um, since I've got to the beat, I've heard a lot. By the way, what's up, Ellis, man? Thank you for doing this. What's up? Since I've got on the beat, I've heard a lot about these hills you guys do, man. Can you mm. – Describe what one of those workouts is like, like the degree of it. Like, how does that whole thing play out there? Uh, I was a hill workout. Um, I couldn't maybe like 45 degrees up, but it's really just to emphasize stride length, uh, leg power. It's a great workout. You know, all the greats have done it um, throughout football history. All the greats have done it. So hill workouts have been a big part of just at least my offseason personally as a part of getting faster, getting more explosive. And yeah, you put some cones out there, hop over some cones, but mainly spent work, mainly working on your explosion. All right, we'll go through the list one more time for another round of questions. If you do not have a question, just say pass. Uh, ben Jones, statecollege.com. Ellis, you've obviously sort of established yourself a little bit in that rotation, but if, if you were a guy that maybe was still trying to establish yourself but couldn't actually get onto the field right now in the same ways that you could in the spring or, or maybe how it's limited. How do you think you would go about, you know, proving the coaches that you were uh, ready to play and stuff like that? Um, I feel like the best way to prove the coaches of whether or not you're ready to play is how hard you work and your maturity level. Yeah, your maturity level. Um, obviously, work ethic goes into how accountable you are coming in every single day, busting your butt. Maturity level, knowing the plays, knowing you're supposed to be, da, 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 and all that gets shown in practice. We do so much outside of the field that guys know who's accountable before you even put a helmet on, before you even put shoulder pads on. Guys know who's ready to play, who's ready to go out there and run football games. So. Rich Garcella, Reading Eagle. Ellis, can you describe what it's like dealing with all the – coronavirus protocols, all the precautions that you guys are taking um, is a much of a pain. And also, what's your confidence that the – what is your confidence like that the season will be played? Um, for the, the experience, at first it was different. I feel like for everybody can feel that way. 
Um, but it's a great system in place. It's not really too much out of the way other than working out with a mask on. That's probably the biggest change. But other than that, it really hasn't been too crazy other than normal COVID times, the way 2020 has been. And I'm sorry, what was the second half of your question? What's, what is your confidence? Or how confident are you that, the, that there will be a season this fall? I'm confident that we're going to play when we're supposed to play. And like I said, that everybody's going to make sure that we wait to the proper time where all the student athletes are going to be able to go out there and compete at a high level, but also be safe. Let's go to John Salber with the Center Daily Times. Ellis, what do you guys sort of lose out on by not having non-conference games this year? Is there a certain level of ramp up that you get that you're not going to have this year? My biggest disappointment, um, I don't know if y'all know, I'm a Virginia native, so I was supposed to go back and play Virginia Tech. And not going there hurts a lot because I've been looking forward to that since I came in. But at the same time, I mean, the Big Ten is one of, if not the best conference in college football. We got a lot of competition. Regardless what they decide to do, it's going to be great football. And it's going to be fun to watch from the plane. Mark Brennan, Fight On State. Ellis, how seriously do you guys take that linebacker U tradition? I know LeVar Arrington had some things to say recently, and, and what do you think when you see other schools trying to kind of claim that? Um, I, For starters, I would say, yes, we do take it very seriously. Um, obviously, we keep a close connection to our alumni base throughout all the linebackers out of play here. Uh, if you play a linebacker here, you definitely got a reputation to uphold. And you got to live with that. You got to live with that mantra day in, day out, in the weight room, on the field, in the class, 24-7. Um, the thing about what other schools, man, other schools can say what they want to say. We got the history to back it up. Um, and we're going to keep we gonna keep producing. It's not done yet. OBU is continuous. It's, it was here before I'm going to be here. It's going to be here after, so. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep building on it. Peter Terpstra, WTAJ. All right, I have another roommate question. Uh, who's the best cook in the house? Michael. Who wins the video games? And who might be like the most tidy or the most like clean and organized? Jesse's definitely the most tidy, clean, and organized. Micah is the best cook. That video games question gonna get me in trouble, man. Cause we <laughs> we be back and forth. I mean, I'm gonna say me, especially in the Madden, uh, FIFA, Jesse and Cam gonna have to argue over that. But next time y'all talk to talk to Micah, just be like Ellis is mad at Messiah and see what he say. Mark Wogenrich, SI.com. Folks, what are you looking forward to most? about what you can do tomorrow? Is there something in the walkthrough or being on the field that you want to accomplish? Um, really just getting the verbal commands of the Mike linebacker position back down. We didn't have spring ball, so it's kind of been a while since I've been out there commanding guys around, moving guys. So that's something I'm going into tomorrow, really emphasizing. Also, just being around the guys. I mean, we've been working out in groups of – Small, like small. We've been divvied up. Like I'm not gonna try to guesstimate the number, but like being around just your whole defense and getting that chemistry aspect, it's it's gonna be cool. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record. Ellis, how about the physical preparation? Where are you at right now? Going, mm -hmm. trying to prepare through these last few months to where you think you would be in a typical year. Is there much difference, or is there anything you have to step up now? to get there or how do you look at that? I feel like this, once you get, well, hopefully when we have a season, but once you get this close to the season, I'm not going to say there's not much you can do at this point. Cause there obviously is, you got camp, you still got most of the summer left over, but I feel like I've done a good job preparing myself to where I've been working ever, like since we went home with COVID and everything, I've, I've been able to work at a high level. I had a good situation back home to where I don't feel like it's much of a drop off from where I would have been if things were completely normal. If I might even be higher the way I've been working, I, I couldn't tell you. So 
I think everybody else feels that way as well, especially everybody that's been working. So, I mean, it's 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 weird. <laughs> it's definitely weird with everything that's been going on, but at the same time, like. I think everybody's done a good job of controlling what they can control, doing what they can do, and just working as hard as they can work. Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Ellis, if I can go back to a couple names you mentioned earlier, uh, two second-year guys, Brandon Smith, Lance Dixon, they both came in with a lot of recruiting, uh, high rankings and all that. Mm-hmm. What, what it, behind the scenes, what, what's your uh, indication of, of where they can take their Penn State careers and because they, they were working around different positions last year from what we saw, what, what do they benefit from, from kind of that cross-training? Um, I'll answer the second part first. With linebackers, the more positions you know, the better, because you know the defense better. So I know Brandon, we started him off at will. And then as the season came along, we started moving him at Sam. And they're only two opposite sides of the ball, but it still helps him understand the defense and understand his job more. And that can only advance young players. Same thing. And it was the opposite for Lance. At Lance, we had him at Sam at first, and then we moved him to Will. So just both of those guys soaking, soaking up as much knowledge as possible, learning about the game as much as possible. Just any experience is good experience, in my opinion. So. And what was the first half? I know it was two parts of that question. What was the first yeah. half? I'm sorry. Well, we got to see Brandon a, a bit last year, but uh, didn't see much of Lance at all. Can, can you kind of give us a behind-the-scenes report on, on what those two have, have kind of shown the rest of your group through a year on campus? Um, Lance, I'll start off with Lance. Uh, like you said, um, last year didn't really play as much, but Lance has gotten bigger. He's moving, moving great. Um, excited to see what he can do. These walkthroughs are about to start up, so we're going to see where he is with the mental aspect of the game. I'm sure that's going to be on point. Uh, he's been looking good at meetings, sounding good at meetings. With Brandon, same thing with Brandon. Uh, he's always been a gifted athlete. I think it's really just been perfecting his craft of the linebacker precision lately. Uh, always been very fundamental, but really honing in on each one and focusing on that and really attacking attacking the weaknesses in his game. So I think he's really going to have a great year. I think he's going to have a great year, both of them. And I think all of us are really excited what they're going to do. They definitely have the ability to take the LBU mantra to, to the next level, to the next level. I think those two guys might have great careers here. Mike, Gro- Mike Gross, Lancaster Newspapers. Yeah, Ellis um, – <clears throat> You talked about not getting to play Virginia Tech. Were you were you mm. recruited by them? Were being a Virginia guy? Were there people around you who maybe wanted you to go to Virginia Tech? Is there a special mm. connection there? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, being from Virginia, you're gonna meet a lot of, or even live around a lot of Virginia Tech alumni. So people from my school, people I was going to school with. Uh, I was recruited by Coach Foster. They were actually my second offer my sophomore year behind Duke. So one of my earliest visits, my sister went to school to Virginia Tech. Actually, that's probably the biggest thing I should have said. So I used to be up there all the time since middle school, just looking at their stadium, like, man, I can't wait to play college football one day. It won't be that. I mean, it might have, I thought it was for a little bit, but Penn State then came up and got me. But, you know, just seeing what college football was, what the stage was like. And I was looking forward to finally playing in that stage. I thought it would have been a cool, you know, life comes full circle thing. But, you know, we're going to play when we're supposed to play. I'm going to keep that attitude. Time for a couple more questions. Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Ellis, uh, thinking back to Micah's recruitment, um, what do you remember about that? And what maybe is one thing that we don't know about Micah that we'd be surprised to know that you kind of found out being around him so much? Um, with Micah's recruitment, obviously Micah was a, was a big-time recruit. Um, from my standpoint, I only saw – I think I met Micah at the spring game his senior year. I'm not sure. But I didn't really get a chance to spend a whole lot of time with him in his in his recruitment process. And honestly, there's really not a lot about Micah that you guys don't know. He's a 
he's an open book, really. Um, great guy, bright personality, one of the biggest competitors I know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really all I can think of. And our last question goes to Nubias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Oh, man. A lot of pressure, Greg Kincaid. I guess I'm going to make this a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask him about your mustache there, but I'll leave that alone. Um, but, um, Ellis, I know next year, potentially, the, the NIL, the name, image, license and stuff may come in. I know mm. it's a little bit further off, but just in general, what were your thoughts when you kind of heard that possibly coming down? And have you thought of ways you might be able to one day, you know, make a little change off that kind of thing? Um. I was I was very excited. Uh, something about me not a lot of people know is that I love clothes. I love fashion. So I wanted to personally start a fashion line, a little clothing line. And as y'all know, we are not able to really promote stuff like that on our pages because it's like pictures of us in football uniforms, something like that. Yeah, athletic page can be used to promote a business page. So with the name, image, and likeness, I can actually finally start one of my passions, which would be really cool. But on top of that, I mean, there's a lot of people who deserve it um, going around. I know some of these, a lot of big time players at different schools, it's been an issue in recent years over like how much the school is making compared to what the, what the, what the team is supposed to make. But that's really, that's really not in my focus. My main focus is really making football games. But if that comes along, if that's a, advancement that the NCAA puts in place, and I'm all for it. I think that young entrepreneurs, young business should always be promoted. And that's really what it is at the end of the day. It's that giving athletes power to use their name and their likeness to create a business. I mean, create, you know what I mean? Create revenue for themselves, which helps them throughout their life. It's not like it's something negative. So I don't know. I could, I could talk about that all day, but those are just my thoughts. <laughs> 